So now if we run the game... Okay, so we've got all these enemies, they're all walking off. Uh, they don't exactly know where to go, they're all moving. So last time we created a simple grid, okay? So we have a grid right here. Okay, and it spawns a bunch of objects, okay? Now, um, in our grid, a little error that I made that I was called out on um, was using the get component transform instead of just writing transform, which I have used just transform before, but um, this is a better practice than finding the component instead of just calling the localized variable. So that's my fault, my bad, okay? Now we've created our grid, but we need to get some data to spawn. So I'm actually gonna create a new scriptable object. So I'm gonna create a folder here and I'm just gonna call it spawners, okay? And in here we can create a new c -sharp script and I'm gonna call it spawner data. Whoops, and I need to get rid of that, there we go. So if I load this up here, we won't actually need any of this and we don't need any of this. All right, so instead of calling from mono behavior, we're gonna be calling from scriptable object. And within this, we're gonna have a public game object. And this is gonna be our item to spawn, okay, which can just be a prefab. Um, we can have a public in, and this can be the minimum spawn amount, okay? And we can also have a public in for the maximum spawn amount. So we can just type in, hey, we want to spawn um, a boot. We can spawn between zero and one of those if we choose. Now, also, we need to create asset menu like we've done before. And we're going to call the file name uh, spawner spawner.asset okay and for the menu name I'm gonna just set that to spawners slash spawner okay simple as that now what we can do now is create some data so I'm just gonna go ahead create a spawner we might actually spawn our random item spawner in a room okay so we can just call it our random item spawner. Do we have our random item spawner? I don't think we do. So I'm just gonna go ahead into my dungeon scene and I can go to the main and we should have our item spawner. Awesome, so I can just chuck this straight in as a prefab and if we go back to our basement empty scene and we go back here okay then we should be able to choose our item spawner okay and we could say well we don't have to spawn one in one of these rooms but we can spawn one okay or you could have like 10 or whatever number you want now we need to create a script that actually handles uh, spawning the actual data. If we just go to our room, I'm actually going to create a new script, okay? And the name for this is going to be called Object Room Spawner, okay? So now, if we go ahead and open that up, whoops. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a public struct. Now, this is going to be my random spawner, okay? And in it, similarly to what we've done before, we can have a string for our name. So we can just store like the type of um, item that we're spawning. And we can also call in a spawner data, which I'll just call spawner data, okay? Uh, with the lowercase s 
Now, I'm also gonna have outside of that, but inside of my class, I'm gonna have a private grid controller. And this can just be the grid. And I can have a public random spawner. And this can be an array because we may want multiple objects to be spawned in the room, okay? We can have a spawner data. Alrighty. So now, within our start void, I'm just gonna set the grid equal to get component in children. And we can just grab the grid controller, okay? Now, what we have to do is we're going to uh, have a method to spawn our objects. So I'm just gonna call a random spawner. This can be our data. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab an integer and this can be our random iteration. And this can be equal to a random dot range between our data dot spawner data dot min spawn, okay? And our data dot spawner data dot max spawn. And I'm gonna add one to this because um, within Unity's random dot range, if you take a look at the method itself, so if you're random dot range, the maximum value, it doesn't actually tell you, but in the Unity documentation, uh, the maximum value excludes this value. So if you have between zero and one, it's actually gonna exclude the one and just have between zero and zero, which doesn't really work. So we're gonna, have, we're gonna add one to the end of it. So it's the, actually the same as this number that we're putting in here. So for int i equals zero, i is less than our random iteration, i plus plus. And for each one that we get within our iteration, um, we can grab a random position, okay? And we can set that equal to a random dot range between zero and our grid dot available points dot count minus one, okay? Now, as we've set up in the prior video, we have our available points and we're gonna add available points on, okay? Now, once we've added our available point, we want to instantiate the game object. So game object go is equal to instantiate uh, our data dot spawner data dot item to spawn okay and we can grab our grid at our available points at our random position okay and we can just leave the rotation because it's not important and we can set the parent to transform okay so just this as a game object sweet so the next thing we want to do is i'm going to remove the available point so it's not going to be available for us anymore so we can do remove at okay and we can just grab our random position. So we're going to remove it at that integer, um, at that index. Okay. And then we've spawned an object. So maybe I'll just put a debug log just so we can have some clarity. Okay. Spawned object. All right. Awesome. So I might go ahead and create another scriptable object just to show you that um, we can create multiple of whatever you'd like. This can be our chase enemy. Okay. And do we have a prefab for our enemy? No. So again, I'm going to have to go back to my main. Save it. And I'm going to create a prefab and we can go ahead and... Oh, he does have a sprite. It's just very... Can't really see it. Which is a bit unfortunate. 
Alright. Let's put it like that. It's a bit easier to see. Okay. So... I'm just gonna go back to my empty room. And... I'm actually gonna duplicate this because... I guess it's not gonna be an empty room. Um, if we've got all this stuff in it. So we don't actually need a room spawner in here. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna save that. I'm gonna go Control D, and I'm gonna rename it. Oops. Instead of Basement Empty One, I can just be Basement Basic One. Okay. And should be the exact same. Cool. So we can add our object Room Spawner and our grid it'll find but now so just an issue i found is we can't actually see our struct so we need to do a system dot serializable and that will allow us to see it within the inspector okay so now we can put in maybe two our first element this can be our uh, chase enemy just so we can keep a nice name of it for us and our spawner data, if we go to just drag in our chase enemy and make sure we add our enemy to it. There we go. We can have zero and maybe we can have one and six enemies. Okay. And for our other one, this can be our random item spawner. And we can just set that to a random item spawner. So another thing that we have to do is we haven't actually told it to spawn our objects anywhere. So within our grid controller, after we found, after we've added all of the available points, um, what I can do is I can get component uh, in parent. Okay. And we can grab our object room spawner and we can initialize. Whoop. Hmm. We need to actually create a method here. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a public void. Okay. And this will be called initialize our object spawning. Okay. Now uh, for each of our random spawner, random spawners. Okay. In our spawner data. Uh, we want to spawn objects, okay? And we can just take in that data. So what this is doing is it's saying, uh, since we're having multiple types of objects that we want to spawn in the scene, for each type of object, we're going to spawn it based on its data, okay? Now within here, we can just call initialize object spawning. Awesome. So we haven't actually found our grid controller. So I guess what we can do is instead we can just make this public. So yep, public grid control grid. And we can just drag it in. Okay. Awesome. So we've got one, two, three, four, five enemies and an object has spawned. And we've got a screw this time. And awesome. Now, once we've actually created this, we want to make it so we can spawn this type of room or any type of room randomly. And this could be based on a weight, but for now, I'm just going to leave it based on, I guess, the type of room it's going to be completely random between, say, if you have two types of rooms that you want to spawn uh, within your scene, then it's just going to be two. So to do this, what I'm going to need to do is go to my room controller. So if we go to our dungeon scripts and the room controller, I'm just going to scroll down and I guess I'll just chuck it here. So we can have a public string and this is going to be <laughs> get random regular room name 
Okay, so this is going to be, let me just get a random, get a random room name, okay? And so we're going to have a string array, which is going to be our possible rooms, okay? And this can be equal to a new string, and so we could have empty, okay? And we could also have our basic one that we've just created. Okay. And we just do that. Get rid of this. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to return our possible rooms at a random dot range between zero and our possible rooms dot length. Oops. Okay, so that will give us a random room between these two for now. So when we actually create the rooms, so if we head over into in our dungeon generator I believe okay so in instead of spawning an empty one we can just go room controller dot instance dot um, get a random room name okay so it's just gonna grab random room name and yeah so if we head over to, and oh yeah, the last thing we need to do is add it into our build settings. So if we go ahead, okay, we go add open scenes, awesome. So we go to basement main, we run that. Now see, we've got a bunch of rooms spawning, okay. And if we have a look, we've got start empty, basic one, empty, awesome. Now, there are obviously some issues with this. We can remove the grid. That's a um, pretty simple issue. So all we have to do is go to our grid controller and we can just go um, geo.setactive to false. Okay. So now, whoop, what happened? So now if we run the game, okay, so we've got all these enemies, they're all walking off, uh, they don't exactly know where to go, they're all moving, so I guess the problem is that we don't want our, um, we don't want our enemies to be moving if we're not in the room, and this is an issue with that we can fix in the next episode, but, because there are a lot of enemies running around everywhere, <laughs> um, but for now, I'm going to leave it at this, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and leave a comment if you have any feedback or any questions. I'll be sure to uh, eventually go through and read everything, okay? And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Thanks.